Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Vikram. In this class, we will try to understand merge or time complexity using substitution method. So, in our previous classes, we have discussed the insertion sort, bubble sort, uh, insertion sort efficiency, bubble sort efficiency, and uh, uh, selection sort efficiency. Please watch those videos for better understanding. And every video in our channel is going to be part of an entire course or a playlist. Our suggestion is to follow the entire course so that you can have better understanding of the concepts. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Now, coming to this class, we will try to understand this the efficiency of this merge sort algorithm and uh, uh, we have already discussed that in order to find the efficiency of recursive algorithms we have to find the recurrence relation first we have to find the recurrence relation and that recurrence relation can be solved by using two methods one of the method is substitution method in the next video we are going to understand the time complexity of the merge sort by using master's method also okay so now uh, let's start our uh, uh, analysis to find the recurrence relation for this and as we have discussed that whenever we are trying to uh, find the recurrence relation for the given recursive algorithm we have to first know the uh, amount of time taken by the base condition and the amount of time taken by the recursive part of the algorithm so the base condition is that part of the algorithm which is going to stop the execution of the algorithm without the base part it is going to take infinite loop and the recursive part is the part of the algorithm which solves the problem okay so now uh, here here uh, when a, when the algorithm is going to stop so the amount of time taken by this algorithm is if you take it as t of n so the base condition is the part which is going to stop the algorithm so when it is going to stop if p is greater than r if p is greater than r or p is equal to r p is equal to r means there is no element there is only one element which cannot be further divided into small small pieces so as he uh, the detailed explanation about merge sort uh, algorithm and merge sort uh, uh, working mechanism has already been explained in data structures so we are explaining this concept under the assumption that you have already watched the concepts of data structures so with which is the prerequisite for this course okay so now so here uh, when this condition is going to be true uh, is going to be false this condition is going to be false whenever there is only one element which cannot be further divided into small small pieces in our uh, previous uh, explanation we have seen that whenever the value of p and r are equal which means whenever there is only one element then this one will fail and we are not going to further divide the algorithm so the array into small small pieces so this is the stopping condition okay if the value of n is equal if there is only one element if n is equal to one if only one element then uh, the algorithm is going to stop its execution so if there is only one element if the value if the value of n is equal to 1 then then it means that we have only one element this is where the algorithm is going to stop its execution what about the recursive part the recursive part of the algorithm is so the amount of time taken by the recursive part means this part so what is the amount of time taken by this merge sort it is t of n by 2 how can i say that how can i say that means if you take this value of q so here in this case uh, p plus r what is the value of p, p and r p is the low value and uh, 7 is the high value r is the high, higher index so 0 plus 7 by 2 which is 3.5 by 2 floor of 3.5 sorry 7 by 2 is 3.5 floor of 3.5 is 3 means this 3 is the index where the division has to be done so this array is going to be divided here so here this part is taken and this part is taken so that is making the array into two halves so this part is p comma q p comma q means 0 comma 3 so this part is what we call it as t of n by 2 so we are making that array into one half so the amount of taken the amount of time taken by that one half of the uh, array to get solved to get sorted is t of n by 2 similarly what about this function call this function call is going to take an amount of time t of n by 2 again because it is q plus 1 by 1 comma r q plus 1 means 3 plus 1 4 ka, 4 to r so another half is taken so the amount of time taken by this to solve the uh, to get into sorted order is t of n by 2 
if this entire array is taking t of n means half of it is going to take t of n by 2 and the remaining half is going to take t of n by 2 okay and what about the efficiency so the amount of time taken by this merge part this is the merge part right so the amount of time taken by this is n how can i say that let's try to analyze that in detail so we'll take everything and we will analyze okay so uh, each step amount of time taken by this so how many times this one will get executed one time this also one time this is going to execute for n by 2 number of times and this is going to get executed n by 2 number of times i am going very fast because the detailed explanation assume assumption that you have already watched the data structures part and this is one time this is one time one time one time so all these are constants right so the higher order term is this part of the algorithm so so this part is going to execute from p to r in our case it is from 0 to 7 means all the n elements so this is going to iterate for n number of times so after this n number of times iteration this one will be the the, the elements will be in the sorted order okay we have seen the example also so we have taken one example uh, about this merge function we have taken that example so it is going to iterate for n number of times so if you sum up all these things the higher order term is n so the amount of time taken by this merge part of this n okay now what about the recursive part if you sum up all those things we are going to get the amount of time taken by the recursive part of the algorithm so it is going to be 2 into t of n by 2 plus 1 2 into t of n by 2 plus n so there is also constant time we are not going to take that constant time so this is the amount of time taken by the recursive part if n is greater than 1 if the value of n is greater than 1 then only this is going to happen t into 2 of n by 2 plus n now we have to use the substitution method to solve this uh, uh, to solve this recursive relation recursive equation now how to do the substitution method as we have already discussed first is t of n 2 into t of n by 2 plus n and this is our first equation now to find the value of t of n by 2 what we have to do we have to take the same equation and we have to substitute n by 2 in place of n it is 2 into uh, t of n by 4 plus n by 2 okay this is assume that this is our equation 2 what about t of n by 4 t of n by 4 is equal to 2 into t of in place of n we have to substitute in place of n we have to substitute n by 4 which is going to be n by 8 plus n by 4 and this is going to be equation 3 okay now what we have to do substitution method means we have to substitute this equation 2 in equation 1 see here in place of t of n by 2 we have to substitute this entire equation and after that we are going to get t of n by 4 in place of uh, n by 4 we have to substitute this one anyway we will solve that okay okay initially in the place of t of uh, n by 2 we have to substitute this equation now the equation is going to be t of n is equal to 2 into t of uh, 2 into this one 2 into t of n by 4 plus n by 2 and this one is going to be plus it is plus right plus n okay that's it right uh, plus n yeah now if you expand this what it is going to be uh, if you expand this uh, this one is going to be 4 into t of n by 4 2 into n by 2 which is going to be n and this this n plus n this n plus n is going to be okay let's see that okay it is 2n so if you expand this it is 4 into t of n by 4 t of n by 4 plus 2 into n by 2 2 and 2 will be gone and n plus 1 n plus n is equal to 2n so i have written it directly now in the place of t of n by 4 we have to substitute this equation third equation so if you substitute that so again t of n is equal to in place of t n by 4 it is this one right 2 into t of 
n by 8 plus n by 4 and plus here right so here it is 2n okay so in place of p of n by 4 we have to substitute this and if you expand this this is going to be 8 into t of n by 8 plus n plus 2n which is 3n okay so now now we have to find how that equation is looking like this is where you should be uh, you should use your uh, entire uh, uh, mathematical knowledge okay so now how it is looking like so it is looking like it is uh, i'll start from here so t of n is equal to how it is looking like it is 2 power k into t of n by 2 power k plus k into n so how i have written this for example if you consider this as k and it is 2 power k it is k means k is equal to 3 means 2 power k is 2 into 2 into 2 2 power 3 which is 2 into 2 into 2 which is 8 for example if you take this as 8 uh, if you take this as 4 means here it is going to be 16 16 t of n by 16 plus 4 n so that is how the relation is recursive relation is so based upon that i have considered we have we have placed uh, here taken it as k and this we have taken it as 2 power k now we have to consider the base condition when the base condition when this algorithm is going to stop its execution so based upon that we have to conclude come to a conclusion right the, the algorithm has to stop so when it is going to come to a conclusion whenever this t of n so this n value is equal to 1 then it is going to stop its execution it means that whenever n by 2 power k is equal to 1 then it is going to stop its execution so now what we have to do in order to get n here here it is is, is equal to n is equal to 2 power k if you place n is equal to 2 power k in this part so then it will become 1 right 2 power k by 2 power k which is 1 which is 1 whenever this is t of n is equal to 1 so if you try to expand this if you try to expand this t of n is equal to here 2 power k into t of 1 if i substitute 2 power k in the place of n 2 power k by 2 power k which is 2 power uh, which is 1 2 power k by 2 power k which is 1 right okay now plus k into n okay so now this one is 1 we have seen in the recursive equation whenever t t of 1 is there means then we are going to uh, get 1 okay so now if you substitute that it is 2 power k plus k n now from this equation what is the value of k what is the value of k value of k is equal to uh, if you substitute log on both sides it is uh, log n base 2 because it is 2 power k it is log n base 2 okay so now here and what is this uh, 2 power k in, in, in with respect to n 2 power k is equal to n so we can substitute here if you if you bring all this into n in the form of n so then it is going to be n plus n log n c here base 2 c here in the place of k i have substituted log n in the place of 2 power k i substituted n okay if you if you bring all this in the form of n because we have n elements we have to bring the uh, final equation in the form of n right it is n plus n log n now now which one is the higher order term which one is the higher order term as we have discussed that in the time complexity to find the efficiency of an algorithm from the time complexity only the higher order terms are to be considered order of growth the higher order term is n log n higher order term n is greater than n log n right so the efficiency of the merge sort is n log n so this is the efficiency of efficiency of uh, uh, merge sort 
okay now what about the asymptotic notations which notation which is the notation that has to be used if it is the worst case if it is the best case if it is the average case so for all those cases for whatever may be the case the merge sort algorithm is going to work in the same way it is going to do the same number of comparisons which is n log n see here whatever may be the order so the elements may be in the worst case in the sense the elements are in the reverse order the elements may be in the best case the elements are already in the sorted order even in that case also it is going to take an amount of n log n if it is in the average case some elements are in the sorted order and some are not in the sorted order in that case also it is going to do all the comparisons so all the comparisons means it is n log n the efficiency is n log n so it is going to take n log n number of comparison so it is going to take n log n number of comparisons and it is going to take exactly the same number of comparisons in any case whatever may be the input it is going to take exactly so understand my term exactly exactly whenever exactly same number of comparisons are done means it is going to be theta theta of n log n is the efficiency of merge sort okay so this is all about uh, merge sort time complexity using substitution method hope you got the clarity on this concept thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates and if you have any doubts regarding this concept please post your doubt in the comment section below and if you feel that this video is helpful to you please give us a like symbol and please share this video with your friends so that they will also get benefited thanks for watching